sorts of dogs in this parade at the Royal Oak School, Auckland. For this is a parade of children's pets, and every kid knows that a pooch is a pet, whether he's high, wide and handsome or any other shape. So at this parade there are all sorts, big ones and little ones, thick ones and thin ones, hairless ones and woolly ones, dogs of all shapes and sizes. <laughs> There is also a parade of Great Danes, arranged by the New Zealand Great Dane Club. Big enough to eat you at one snarl, Great Danes are said to be very gentle and companionable. Okay, fellow, we're not arguing. A mobile Plunkett unit is being presented to the local branch of the Plunkett Society by the Mayor of Dunedin. Partly paid for by the government and partly by local subscriptions, the unit is a memorial to all men of the Navy and merchant service who were killed in the war. These novel Plunkett rooms will serve the growing Dunedin suburbs. Mothers are not slow to take advantage of the rooms. It means a saving in time. And for every mother, this means extra time to get some of those endless jobs done that keep her busy for so long. Keeping a check on children's development means spotting trouble as soon as it starts. And Plunkett nurses can often give the necessary advice to ensure that a child's health is 100%. Containing standard Plunkett equipment, these mobile rooms will soon be seen in many New Zealand cities. There is ample proof of the value of the Plunkett system. This memorial mobile clinic is another extension of the society's work. Work that has set a world standard in infant health and welfare. I want to thank the people of New Zealand for the invaluable help you are giving in providing food and other relief supplies for countries abroad, such as England, and those in which we, in UNRWA, are working. From my personal knowledge of the men and women and children in those lands, I can assure you that the help you are giving is vital in saving lives. Without your help, some starvation would have been inevitable. The need for food is going to continue on into the future. There is no doubt of that. Keep up your good work in helping to feed the world's hungry millions. In his backyard, A.G. Passmore of Dunedin has established an industry that brings him in business from all over the world. He's a worker in greenstone, which he gathers from the west coast of New Zealand. Greenstone, strictly called nephrite, is known to the Maori by many names, according to the different varieties. All of it is hard, heavy and valuable. This pile is worth several hundred pounds. Cutting it is a long and slow business, even for the steel saws that run in troughs of carborundum and water. Smaller cutters slice it into slabs, and high-speed cutters shape the pieces, which are polished on carborundum smoothing discs. Even with machines, it takes days of polishing. The Maoris once did this work entirely by hand. Once, greenstone was sent to Germany, where it was cut and polished. Today, this young New Zealander is turning out jewellery and ornaments like these from his backyard workshop. With rabbits worth four and sixpence a pair, it's a boom year for rabbiters in Southland and their ferrets are working overtime. The season won't last long. Down the burrow goes a ferret, and the rabbiter makes sure he's really going to work. One last look round, and here comes two and threepence. So you want another, do you? There's plenty more where that one came from.
Ferreting is just one method. There's trapping too. Today it's war on rabbits. With their horses laden with rabbits, the rabbiters are off to the road with their morning harvest. Hung on gallows, the carcasses are covered to keep off flies and left for the collection lorry. This is a highly organized business, and with a huge area to cover, a fleet of a dozen lorries is kept busy. This is the dividend on a few rabbits liberated 80 years ago. After gathering up all the rabbits in their circuit, the lorries set off for the factory at Bluff. At the factory, processing the carcasses starts the moment they're off the lorry. This is food for Britain. The entire output, some 3,000 tons of rabbit meat, left this factory for Britain in the first six months of this year. These carcasses are being packed for freezing. Some of the meat is canned. After being sealed in tins and cooked, it's also packed for export to Britain. And it's the price of skins today that has put up the price of rabbits. These skins will someday keep someone warm. But for the rabbiters in Southland, killing off this pest is still a cold job. <laughs>